much, Bruce. Robert? Well, I hate to bring bad news, but that's really all I do, actually. <laughs> the fact is, people have been asking me yesterday and today, as well as at pretty much everywhere else that I speak, uh, what uh, can we do to encourage the moderates? And I've got to tell you that there are moderate Muslims, but there is no moderate Islam. That is an unpleasant fact, but it is a fact, and I'll explain. Now, moderate Muslims, people usually assume that that means Muslims who believe different things from the jihadis, that they don't believe that it is part of their religious responsibility to wage war against unbelievers. They don't believe that they should hate Jews and kill them. They don't believe that they should subjugate women and non-Muslims as inferiors in the society under an institutionalized system of discrimination and harassment. There is actually no such Islam. People talk in the West and they take advantage of our ignorance about Islam to mislead people into complacency. I'll give you an example. There is a 512-page fatwa against terrorism by a Pakistani Islamic theologian named Muhammad Tahir al-Qadri. And about five or ten times a day, Muslims write to me and they say, you say Islam is not a religion of peace, you should read Tahir al-Qadri. So I did. And luckily, you know, it's the wonders of the internet age, I was able to get a PDF and search it. And so what I did was, I searched it for the Quran passages that exhort Muslims to commit violence and wage war against unbelievers. Because if he's really going to be presenting an alternative form of Islam, then it would be just commonsensical, would it not, for him to take up those passages and explain why Muslims should not take them as marching orders today. And I searched for chapter 9, verse 5, slay them wherever you find them. Chapter 4, verse 89, slay them wherever you find them. Chapter 2, verse 191, slay them wherever you find them. Chapter 9, verse 29, fight against the Jews and the Christians until they're subjugated and pay the tax. Chapter 47, verse 4, when you meet the unbelievers, strike at their necks, behead them. And others of that kind. 512 pages, he never mentioned any of those verses. Now, do you understand the implications of that? This is supposed to be a piece yeah. saying that terrorism is wrong and Muslims should not engage in it, and he never addressed any of the justifications that the jihad terrorists use to show that what they're doing is Islamically correct. That's not a reform kind of Islam. That's not a moderate Islam. That's a big, extensive, elaborate effort to deceive unbelievers and make us ignorant and complacent about the jihad threat. You cannot reform something, you cannot fix a problem without acknowledging that there's a problem, you see. And there is no moderate Islam. There is no version of Islam that does not teach warfare against unbelievers and their subjugation. It's just like this. This does not mean, as Raymond and Bruce were saying, that all Muslims are doing this or all Muslims are even on board with this. But it's just like in the Catholic Church. The Catholic Church teaches, as part of its official teaching from the Pope and so on, Contraception is wrong. Contraception is immoral. Don't contracept. <laughs> survey after survey shows that 70, 80, 90 percent of Catholics use contraception. Now, we would be absolutely wrong, incorrect, to say that, oh, that means that the church doesn't really teach that contraception is wrong. It really does. It's just that most Catholics don't pay attention. Islam really teaches warfare against unbelievers. A lot of Muslims don't pay attention. That's just great. The problem is they have no theological leg to stand on in Islam, and therefore when they're challenged by the jihadis, and even when their children are recruited by the jihadis, they don't have any answer. The thing is, people have a lot of influences in their lives. Many of you have a religion, but you also have other perspectives, other priorities, other beliefs, and all of these things are complicated in everybody's heart and soul and mind so that you have a spectrum of belief, knowledge, and fervor. Some people are very knowledgeable and very devout, whatever their religion may be, and some people bear the name of the religion, but they couldn't care less, or they don't know, or they're just more interested in something else. That's what moderate Muslims really are. They are people who just want to live their lives. If you talk about Muslims who are aware that the that the Quran and the example of Muhammad and Islamic law all teach warfare and conquest and subjugation of unbelievers and who reject that and who say that must not be done, you're talking about maybe five or ten people. <laughs> I mean worldwide.
out of 1.6 billion. <laughs> Zudi Jasser and his friends. <laughs> if you want to talk about actual Muslim reformers, it is exactly that way. But if you want to talk about Muslims who just aren't going to take up arms against us at any time, well, that's millions upon millions of people. The problem is, when the chips are down, where will they side? They will side with the Muslims who are waging war. That is where their allegiance is. They probably won't do anything. But to base our foreign policy and our domestic policy, our immigration policy, to base the future of our nation, to base our children's lives, on the idea that the vast majority of Muslims don't want to do this, don't care about jihad and conquest and subjugation, and that somehow some large group of Muslims who are moderates are going to rise up and fight against the jihadis and stop them, that is not only foolish, that is suicidal. Thank you so much.